Hey everybody, thanks for coming back and joining me. Appreciate you hanging out with Mr. Bauer today. Uh, our focus today in this video is to focus on text structures and we're talking specifically with nonfiction text. When an author wants to deliver some information, he or she is gonna use what I'm gonna cover five different ways that you can do that. So let's take a look at the different structures you could use to organize your nonfiction writing. We've got compare and contrast, which you're talking about how they're the same and different. We've got sequential order, which means this happens first and second and 97th, and this happens last. We've got cause and effect, where the author is describing something that's happening and the effect that it has on other things. We've got descriptive, also maybe known as description, where you've got a topic and then you tell all about that topic. The last one we're going to focus on here as, uh, as we continue is problem and solution, where there's something that's a problem and then what we do to fix it. Okay, now I want to pause here first. If you are unfamiliar with any of the text structures and you want more practice, you can certainly pause the video right here and read through those. We've got definitions, keywords, and graphic organizers. And you can also check out some of my other videos on text structures where I go into detail about each one of these five as well. All right, so um, feel free to pause the screen right here if that's helpful to you. And if you are having a good understanding of text structure, let's move forward. This is kind of a bit of a review. All right, here we go. All right, first I'm going to give you a couple situations where uh, I'll give you a student and then they are going to want to create some text and you have to figure out what the best organizational structure is. So, first one, it says Sam is writing a paper about global warming. In her paper, she explains three reasons for global warming and what has happened to our Earth because of those reasons. Which organizational structure would be best for her paper? All right, so we think about that. We've got reasons, what's happened. Okay. If you're thinking problem and solution, I want you to change your mind. All right. She's not talking about what to do to fix it. She's talking about what has happened. All right. So if it's not problem and solution, what do you think it is? If you said cause and effect, you are absolutely right. Talking about global warming and then what it's doing to other things because of that. Our second scenario, Lynn is writing a paper that explains how to address the recycling problem at her school. You might have noticed a keyword in that scenario. You might have seen the word problem and that's because our text structure that she would probably want to use to be best organized would be problem and solution. Absolutely. All right, third scenario, John is writing a paper about his turtle. He wants to provide many details about what his turtle looks like, what it likes to eat, and other information about what makes it special. So there's another keyword in there, but what it looks like, eats, and special information. We're going to talk a lot about the turtle. So what do you think what organizational structure would fit best? If you said details, descriptive, that would be the best text structure to use. All right, our last scenario, Adelita is writing a paper about peer-to-peer -peer mistreatment. She wants to explain what causes it and what can be done to stop it. Okay, so we're trying to see that word cause. Now, don't get tricked there, right? We definitely have a problem, and now she's going to offer a way that this can be stopped. So what do you think about the best organizational structure? If you said... Problem and solution, there it is, right? So we're figuring out what causes the problem and then how to stop it, all right? So there we go, a little bit of a scenario. All right, next up, I'm gonna give you guys some graphic organizers and I want you to figure out if you can figure out, now that they have the information in a graphic organizer, what text structure are they going to use? All right, so up first, we have this uh, starfish in the middle and then reading around, it says flat bodies, rough, leathery, spiny, scavenger, and many colors. The scenario here says Angel is using a graphic organizer to plan a, out a report for her science class. Based on what she's prepared, with organ, which organizational structure would work best for her report? See starfish in the middle. See lots of information all around it. What do you think? If you said... Descriptive, that is the best one, right? We're talking all about it, giving lots of examples and trying to clearly describe all about the starfish. Okay, next graphic organizer is 
Cindy is using a graphic organizer to plan a paper about the major events of the Industrial Revolution. Based on the graphic organizer she's using, which organizational structure has she most likely chosen for her report? So I see we've got uh, four kind of rectangles with rounded corners. I see three arrows pointing down. So it seems like we have one and then the next and then the next and the next. Telling us there's some set of order. So the text structure she's most likely chosen is going to be, what do you think? Sequential or chronological order, right? This is happening, then this, and then this. All right, last one here. It says Theo is using a graphic organizer to plan out a paper that explains why people don't exercise even though they know it is healthy. Based on what he has prepared, which organizational structure would work best for his report? So we have gym fees are too expensive, people are too tired at the end of the day, and people do not have enough time. Those reasons would talk about why people are not exercising. So we've got, what do you think? What structure he's going to use? Cause and effect, you bet. So we have these things right here, because gym fees are too expensive, because people are too tired, and because people do not have enough time, the effect is there and simply not exercising. All right, so one bonus one here, see if you can figure out what book slash movie this is all about. Our scenario says, Tyler's using a graphic organizer to plan out a paper that compares a movie to the book. Based on what he's prepared, which organizational structure would work best for his report? So in the movie, Alan Parrish appears. They find a game in the attic of the house. And the parents are killed in a skiing accident. In the book, they find the game in the park. Judy and Peter Shepard play their game while their parents are out. And the similarity is they play a game. Now you might know what book slash movie that's all about, but we're focused on the organizational structure. What do you think would work best for this report? We've got the movie, we've got the book, and how they're different. Talking about how they're the same. If you said... Compare and contrast. You got it. Nicely done. All righty. Last one. I've got two passages for you. We'll take a look at those together. And just like we've been doing, I want you to see if you can figure out which one of the five has used this structure. So our first one comes from Plain Chocolate Icing. I know you're getting hungry just listening to that. From the White House Cookbook by F.L. Gillette. All right. So be thinking about the five text structures we've talked about and see if you can figure out which one is used here. First, put four tablespoons of scraped chocolate into a shallow pan. Place it where it will melt gradually, but not scorch. When the chocolate is melted, stir in three tablespoons of milk and one tablespoon of water. Then mix all the ingredients together and add one cup of sugar. Next, boil the ingredients for about five minutes. While the mixture is still hot, and when the cakes are nearly cold, spread some evenly over the surface of one of the cakes. Then, put a second cake on top, alternating the mixture and cakes. Lastly, cover the top and side of the cake with the mixture and set in a warm oven to harden. Which organizational structure is used in this passage? What do you think? What do you think? We have a recipe and recipes are typically sequential order. Absolutely, we wanna make sure that we're doing those things in order, otherwise you don't have cake, you have, well, most of the time you have garbage, so make sure you put those in order. And our last one from today, this is Cameras Digital or Film by Lindsay Crow. Again, focus on the organizational structure used in this passage. Here we go. While digital and film are used for the same purpose, they can yield different results. The quality of images have come a long way on digital cameras. Although many argue film cameras still have the best quality prints, Digital cameras tend to be more expensive than film cameras. One reason is there are more expensive parts in the actual digital camera. Once you have a digital camera purchase, there is little to no cost to use, especially when using rechargeable batteries. On the other hand, film cameras require you to continuously purchase film for the camera. Which organizational structure is used in this passage? Well, we've got digital, we've got film, they're different. They're the same. When we have differences and similarities, we are usually using 
compare and contrast. Well, there it is, folks. Thanks for joining me today. Appreciate you hanging out with Mr. Bauer. We'll see you in the next video and keep focusing on that text structure when you're reading nonfiction texts.